Hi guys, welcome to today's QGIS tutorial. In this video, we will learn creating a simple soil map in QGIS. You can subscribe to this channel and follow all my previous useful GIS tips and tutorials. If you like what we do here and you want to support this channel, you can join our Patreon. I'll provide a link in the description below. So let's go to today's exercise. So in this exercise, we're going to take a very, very simple, three very, very simple steps in uh, creating our first soil map with some data that you're going to download. So we'll start by where can we get the soil map data for our project. Then we're going to customize the data for our region of interest. And finally, we're going to make the soil map in the print composer. So let's go to the first point and see where we can actually uh, get this soil map data for our project. So for us to get this soil map data for our project, we're going to open our browser. For this, in this case, I'm going to be using Google Chrome. You can use any browser that you have. Then in, a, in my search, uh panel i'm going to search for fao digital digital soil map then i'm going to hit enter then it's going to bring me to the fao.org i'm going to select the fao.org the soil map of the world then under the website of the fao which is the Food and Agriculture Organization. I'm going to select Land. Then under Land, I'm going to select the first link where it says the FAO Digital Soil Map of the World Digitized in a version of. So I'm going to select this uh, FAO UNESCO Soil Map of the World. So I'm going to select that link. I'm going to open it in a new tab. Then it, it will bring us to the new tab and you can see under the new tab, we have uh, several information that you can actually just go through it on your own but what we are interested in is we are interested in uh, downloading the soil map data for the whole world so I'm just going to scroll down and you can see we have very many options there is the legend where you can actually just download the legend for the soil map we are going to come back to this later on but we want to just download the world soil map data so I'm going to select the digital soil map data of the world your network it will open a new tab Then under the GeoNetworks, you're just going to scroll down. You can see we have our first map here. You can actually click to look at just how the map looks like. We're going to, we're going to come back to this uh, later on. So let's just go down and scroll and download our data. So I'm just going to scroll down continuously until I reach where there is the download summary. Then there's the transfer options. So we can actually download data from, you can actually download the high resolution PDF for the map of the whole world. And you can also download data for your Google Earth in form of a KML file. So you can actually download digital soil map of the world. The second link is for the KML file. You'll actually be able to get the KML file. Then the third link now is what we are interested in. We are going to download the digital soil map of the world, which is the S3 shape file format. And there are very many other formats for the different software that you can, get, you can actually use in, in GIS. But for our case, we are going to download the digital soil map of the world, the S3 format. So I'm going to click on that link. It will prompt me to download the and save it in my computer. So I'm going to save it somewhere. I'm going to create a new folder in my GIS folder. GIS data. And I'm going to call this a new folder. And I'm going to say soil data world. And I'm going to save it in that folder. Click on save. Then I'll start downloading my data. Good. My download has completed. I can also, in the meantime, download the soil map of the world. I can actually download the KML file, so I'm going to click on that again. And I'm going to save it in my JS folder still. Desktop. 
GIS, data, soil, data world, and then I'm going to just call it world soils. It's a KML file. I'm going to click on that. I'm actually going to view that on in, a, in a Google Earth and see how it looks like. So you can even still download the PDF format. I'm just going to click on download the PDF format. I'm also going to save it in my soil data format. And I'm going to just, it, this is a PDF file, so I'm going to click on save. So I'm going to let it download. And then we're going to go to QGIS and just look at the kind of data that you have actually downloaded. So we'll open a QGIS and create a new blank project. I've already done that. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to access a folder that where we actually download the data, the soil data folder. And I'm actually going to unzip uh, the two files that we actually downloaded. And so I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to actually unzip them in separate folders. Then after that, I'm just going to uh, minimize my folder here. And I'm going to access my shape files from the folder. So I'm going to go to layer, add layer, because I want to add a layer, I want to add vector layer. Then I'm going to browse for where my vector layers are. Then I'm going to go to the desktop, GIS, data, soil, world soil data. And I'm going to select the DM, DSMW data. So I'm going to select that. Then I'm going to customize here to an S3 shape file because I, I remember we actually downloaded the S3 shape files. So I'm only interested with the S3 shape file. So I'm going to select this for the whole world. Then OK. Then I'm going to add. And then I'm going to close. So it has actually down, uh, added all the data files for the world that we're going to be using in this exercise. So the next thing we need to do is we need to look at the attribute table. But first, before you look at the attribute table, you'll see that it has actually given you a question mark here and it says layer has no coordinate reference system set yet. So what you can do is you can just right click on the layer, export the layer again, save features as, then I'm going to browse where I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it in my data folder, soil again, data of the world. And I'm just going to save it and say, world soil data, it's a shape file. I'm going to save it. Then you can see the CRS is, says is an invalid, it says that it's an invalid projection. So I'm going to change that into the projection that I want, that I want to use in this exercise, which is the WGS84, 43.6. Then I'm going to say, okay, and it will, it will just run and convert it now so that it can actually be, have some coordinate references in it. Then I can actually now remove this layer here. And, and when I look at my data now, when I go to properties, I can see under the information, you can see the CRS now is 4326, which is a geographic coordinate system. So the next thing we want to do is we want to look at our data. So I'm going to open the attribute table by right clicking on the layer, open attribute table. Then I'm going to look at just the information that is within and you can see there is the soil type here. Then uh, the, if you continue scrolling like this, you can see the country. So what I can do is I want to go to the next step here, which is customize the data for region of interest. And, I'll, and, and for region of interest, I'm going to select one country here. So I'm going to say maybe my country, Kenya, which I am familiar with. So I'm going to go to uh, select feature using an expression. I'm going to select that. Then I'm going to go to fields and values. Then I'm going to say the country, which is equal to, then I'm going to say list all unique. And then I'm going to select my country, which is Kenya. And this is Kenya. So I'm going to double click on it to add it into the expression. So I'm going to select only the records that are within the country called Kenya. So I'm going to click on select and then click on close. And then you can see it has selected, you can see it has selected 230 one records we can actually scroll through to just look at what has been selected and you can see there are some that have kenya in it so 
now that you have selected all the data for Kenya, and you can see here on our map it's highlighted in yellow, you can just right click on the layer, se select export, then you're going to save selected features only as a new uh, as a new layer. Then I'm going to save them in my soil data, and I'm going to call this data Kenya, Kenya soils. It's an SVG file. You can change it to any other file you want by selecting the format here. You can change it to your package layer. You can change it to any other kind of layer that you want. But we've been we'll be using the SVG file here. Then I'm going to just make sure that it is save only selected features. Then I'm going to click on run. And I have now a new layer here called Kenya soils. I'm going to uncheck the world soils. So I'm going to zoom in to the Kenya soil data. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to just understand my data. I'm going to open that attribute table here and you can see I still have some that are null, which you can do away with by just uh, these null fields. You can actually do away with them by just selecting the toggle edit, then deleting the null fields. There is a phase one, phase two. So I'm just going to delete from phase one, phase two, and then permafrost, up to permafrost, yeah, that, 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 that actually there's no data there. And I'm going to click on OK. And I've actually deleted whatever I, is not necessary in my data. I'm going to click on Save, then Stop Editing. So now I have the data that I want to use in my exercise. The next thing I'm going to do, to, to do is I'll notice that they have some codes here for the kind of soil. So you can see GMV, VC, JC, LF. If, I, if you're not a soil expert, then it will be very, very difficult for you to just understand this kind of data. So what we need to do is we need to actually go back to our site and check, look at the legend that you have, they have provided for these codes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go back here. And then you can actually uh, click on this uh, digital soil map, the first one. Just click on it. And it will open a blank, a new PNG format that you can actually save on your computer. So you can actually see it has some legends here. And you can look at these codes here and understand the kind of soil that is there. You can just right click on these and then save the image into our computer so that you can actually understand that. I already have it somewhere on my computer, but I can just still save one of uh, the PNG file. Click on save. So I already have the PNG file here now. that I can zoom in and out and just look at the kind of soil that we are actually looking at. So the PNG file has been loaded. I can just zoom in to the legend and you can see the different codes represent the different kinds of soils and there are very, very many codes. So what we're going to be doing in our map is we're going to just be classifying them using these codes. And then if you want to go further and uh, write a report about these, then you'll have to refer to these codes and write a very nice report about uh, your soil map. So the next thing you're going to do is now I'm going to go back to QGIS. And we have ascertained that you can actually uh, classify our data in, in two ways. We can actually use this code here to create our, our map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, close this. Then I'm going to right click. Then I'm going to go to properties. Then I'm going to now go to symbology. And under symbology, instead of a single symbol, I'm going to use the categorized symbols. And then the value that I'm going to categorize is the DOM soils. Then I'm going to use random colors. And before, uh, actually what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to use the random colors. And then we'll look at, we'll look at uh, how we can actually still customize it. So I'm going to click on classify. And you can see it has classified them using the different colors. I'm actually going to remove the last one, which says for any other that is not classified, you can actually be assigned another color. So I'm going to click on apply, okay. And now you can see every kind of soil has been assigned its color. So this is actually uh, very, very good. But what I, I want to do is I want to actually remove this black border here within uh, the different soils. I want to remove this black border. So to be able to remove it, I'm, I'm going to go through the same, same process again. I'm going to right click on my layer, then go to properties. Then I'm going to delete all first. Then under the symbol type, I'm going to select it then it's a simple fill. Then I'm going to make sure that the stroke style, which is a stroke solid line, if there is no pen. So actually there will be no pen around that. Then I'm going to click on OK. Then now I'm going to do, do, uh, do the, 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 the same thing I did before. 
I'm going to select the DOM SOI uh, as my value. Then I'm going to select using random colors. Then I'm going to click on classify. And then I'm going to remove the last color here. Um, then now I have the random colors. I'm going to click on apply. Okay. And now I have I have it looking much better and you can see the black border is no longer there. So actually this looks good. So the next step that I want to do is now the third step, which is we want to make the soil map in the print composer. So to be able to create our soil map, we are going to go to the project. Then you're going to go to the new print layout. So I'm going to select create a new print layout. I'm going to say this is a Kenya soil map. You can have any title for your composer. Then uh, we're going to compose our new map here. So there are, there are two ways you can actually do it. You can actually do it as a landscape or a portrait. And I've already ascertained that my map will actually look better if I do a portrait. So I'm going to select a portrait. How do I do that? I'm going to right click on the blank screen here, then go to page properties, and I'm going to change it to portrait. Then I'm going to make sure that I maximize it to the full screen. Then I'm going to change the size here. I want to print it in an A3 paper. So I'm going to select that, then select my A3 paper and also do that. So you can see it's a bit longer now. That is an A3 by the length and the width is a bit longer because I want to print a very big map. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the map here. So I'm going to click on add map. So I'm going to select where the map is going to be. So I'm going to select here. This is where the map I want. I want the map to cover. Then it's a bit small in size. I actually want a map that covers the whole of this region. So I'm going to click on the move content. Then I'm going to just resize it to maybe say it's a bit smaller still. And I'm going to say 4 million and let's see how it looks like. Yeah, I think 4 million or 3.5 million will work, but 4 million is okay for me. So that's the first step I'm going to do. I'm going to change the scale. Then I'm going to make sure that it has a frame around it. And I'm going to move it centrally here. Then I'm going to stop this moving of the content. Then the next thing I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to add item, add uh, label. I'm going to add the label here. I'm going to call it Kenya. So I'll map. I'm going to change the font by clicking on the font button here. I'm going to put a font of 20 and I'm going to make sure it's bold. Then I'm going to, and then I'm going to say okay. Still small in size. I'm going to add it to maybe say 30. Okay. Now that's much better. Then I'm going to click on the center. And then I'm going to just click on the alignment in the middle. So I have the Kenya soil map here. I can actually change them to capital letters. Yeah, that looks better. So I have my Kenya soil map here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now introduce my legend here. So I'm going to add item, add legend. Then I'm going to add my legend down here. This is, that's why I left this space here. So I'm going to have a long legend because I think there are very many kinds of soils available. And you can see my legend is very, very long, but no worries. I'm going to show you how we're going to work on that. So on my legend here, I'm going to remove the auto update. Then I'm going to now change how many columns this uh, legend has by just scrolling down here. Then I'm going to go to columns and you can see the count is one. I can actually just put maybe five columns. Then I'm going to say equal column width. Then I'm going to slip, split the layers. And you can see now my legend looks much better and manageable. Then I'm also going to give it a title. I'm going to call it the legend or soil types. Soil types. And then I'm going to just delete this Kenya soil. I'm just going to make it blank and then let's go back. Now we have the legend showing the Kenya soil types. Then I'm going to 
put a frame around it. And then I'm going to add all the other elements very quickly. I'm going to add a scale bar. I'm going to add a scale bar here. And that is my scale bar. I can actually make it a bit longer by just going to the segments and adding a few more segments here. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add item again, add another row. I'm actually going to add another row here. I'm going to select a nice north arrow by just scrolling down here and going to arrows. Then I'm going to select <coughs> my arrow that I want to use for this exercise and the color of the arrow. And I have my ni nice arrow here. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Then lastly, I can actually add some other things like maybe say a logo or anything that you want to do. But I think these are enough elements on, on our map. And then I can add the grids by selecting on the map here and then going scrolling down and adding the grids I can also modify the grids and say the X maybe say 3 degrees by the Y 4 degrees yes interior and exterior ticks only then I can also do the coordinates here and make sure that the coordinates are well like for example the left one and the right one should be within the print printable paper so i'm just going to change them to vertical ascending and the right to uh, vertical descending so that they can actually fit in the paper and i've added pretty much everything every element on my map so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm just, just going to click on save go to layouts then I'm going to export it as a PDF or as an image. So I'm going to click on export as PDF. But you can have our first soil map for Kenya. Then I'm going to select the folder where it's going to be in, which is in the desktop. GIS, data, soil. Then I have like that map there, which is a PDF file. I'm going to save it. Say OK, save. Give it a few minutes to do that and then I'm just going to click on the link to open my map and you can see I have a Kenya soil map here it's a PDF when I open it I have my map and my map has a legend so actually what you can actually do is now you can actually be looking at uh, these uh, codes here and comparing them to these codes here that are in these in this table here and that is how you create your simple soil map in QGIS that's it for today's exercise if you found this video useful and you want to learn more on QGIS subscribe to my channel don't forget to give this video a thumbs up otherwise I'm just happy you're here see you in my next video